let the registrar call the case. That's in your honor. Case number IT959 PT, the prosecutor versus Blagojo Simic, Milan Simic, Miroslav Tadic, and Simo Zaric. May we have the appearances, please? Oui, Monsieur le Président, bonjour. Mr. President, good afternoon. I personally am here in court, and my colleagues, Ms. Susan Hayden and Mr. Gramsci de Fatia, who is a new prosecutor, who has just assumed that function. Just to tell you that he is Australian by nationality. He was a prosecutor in Hong Kong, and that he is originally Italian. Also on the side of uh, the prosecution, Ms. Diane Bowles, case manager. That is all. Thank you, Mr. President. For the defense. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I am Defense Counsel Igor Pantelic uh, from Belgrade Bar. Uh, as I can add, I am one man show. I am case manager, I am defense counsel, I am assistant. So here I am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pantelic. <coughs> Today we conduct the initial appearance of the accused Blagohe Simic on the Rule 62 bis. <coughs> we must act in accordance with the provisions of that rule. Now the accused has the right to have the indictment read to him or he may waive the right. Mr. Pantelich? <coughs> yes, Your Honor. Uh, we choose to waive our right to uh hear the indictment and also uh, my client is ready to plead uh, in cumulative way for all counts if it pleases the court. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next we come to the pleas to the indictment and the rules require that the accused be informed that within 30 days he will be called upon to enter a plea or he may do so today if he so requests. Again Mr. Pantelich I ask um, does your client understand the indictment and is he ready to plead today? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, due to the well-known facts, he was publicly indicted since 1995, so six years is enough to be familiar with the indictment. My client is ready to enter his plea today. He don't need uh, 30 days period. Thank you. Thank you. Will the accused um, stand? <coughs> I'm going to put the counts of the indictment to you, and you will plead either guilty or not guilty. Count 1, paragraphs 29 and 31, allege offenses of persecutions against Bosnian Croats, Bosnian Muslims, and other non-Serb civilians committed on or about September 1991 to at least 31st December 1993 and between 17th April 1992 to at least December 31st 1993. In count one, you are specifically charged with persecutions on political, racial, and religious grounds, a crime against humanity punishable under Article 5H, 7.1 and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. How do you plead? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I plead by saying that I am not guilty. Counts 2 and 3, paragraph 36 of the indictment allege offenses of unlawful deportation and transfer of hundreds of Bosnian Croats, Bosnian Muslims, and other non-Serb civilians 
including women and children and the elderly, from their homes in Bosanski Samoc to other countries or to other parts of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, not controlled by Serb forces. In count two, you are specifically charged with deportation, a crime against humanity punishable under Article 5D, 5H71 and 73 of the statute. How do you plead? Not guilty. In count three, you are specifically charged with unlawful deportation or transfer, a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 2G, Article 71 and 73 of the statute. How do you plead? Not guilty. Thank you. You may sit. Uh, that concludes the stage dealing with pleas. We have some other matters which need to be dealt with at this stage. Um, first, the question of disclosures. Um, I want to be informed as to whether that aspect of the pretrial phase has been completed. May I hear from you, Madam Prosecutor, first? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Regarding the disclosure of documents to Defense Council, we are ready to disclose everything. We have an agreement with the Defense so that the disclosure may be done directly into the hands of the client because defense counsel tells us that he will be leaving today. So he agrees that all the documents be given directly to the accused, of course, so we have nothing against that. That is as far as disclosure is concerned. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pantelich? Yes, Your Honor, I can confirm uh, the uh, statement of my uh, distinguished colleague, um, Prosecutor Madam Cala del Ponte, and uh, I can inform uh, trial chamber that uh, the defense will uh, act strictly in accordance with the actual scheduling order. I would like to outline that we are ready for a trial, so no extension of time no uh, uh, any kind of uh, procedural, I would say, maneuvers in order to, uh, in order to, to, to postpone the, the al already uh, set uh, trial date. Mm -hmm. Well, as you're on your feet, um, th I may mention something which <coughs> affects you. The, the pre-trial brief is due on the 26th of March as well as the witness list and your the defense trial brief a month later on the 23rd. Now you have 30 days from the completion of disclosures to file any preliminary motion. You know. And depending on whether you are going to file preliminary motions, that would clearly affect the, the dates that we have set. Are you in a position to to comment on this. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I have um, an idea to uh, give a proposition to the trial chamber uh, with regard to the uh, dynamic of the pre-trial phases prior to, to, to trial date. Uh, first solution might be that uh, a special sc scheduling order for my client, Dr. Blagoje Simic, uh, might be issued uh, uh, in the limits of the uh, trial date. The second possibility is that we could probably adjust actual scheduling order to postpone 
the uh, pre-trial briefs from prosecutors as well as defense pre-trial briefs and, and conference, let's say, if it's possible according to the availability of the cor courtrooms and uh, according to the uh, 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 this administration, court administration, maybe in July, August, or September, so that we, we could be ready for trial in October. Because uh, we are all familiar and we are all aware that almost the same situation in the other cases with regard to the pre-trial conference and pre-trial beefs uh, uh, was, was the case. So uh, between these two possibilities, I think we could find a uh, proper solution. Well, that's, that's uh, fairly helpful. I take it then you, you will not be filing any preliminary motions. Uh, I'm not in position to, to uh, give you the answer uh, today, Your Honor. Uh, I would need at least seven days to, 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 dis to, to, to uh, discuss uh, legal matters with my associates, with my uh, colleagues, and then uh, I will see whether or not uh, the defense will file pre-trial motions. But even, as I said prior to this uh, uh, hearing, my learned colleagues from, from prosecutor bench, even if the defense would uh, uh, file uh, pre-trial motions, it will not affect the date for trial because it is uh, very obvious that we have enough time to uh, resolve this issue of pre-trial motions in the next few months. We have a date fixed for the pre-trial conference on the 16th of May, and it is my intention to, to keep that date firm so that whatever adjustments we make, um, we must make them with that date um, in mind. But thank you, Mr. Pantelich, for your... Uh, for your comments. Uh, Madam Prosecutor, uh, there are um, several ways in which we could approach this matter. Um, one way would be that you would present your pretrial brief as scheduled on the 26th of March. I would presume it would not be um, feasible for you to include um, the accused in that brief now, but you could be afforded an extension of um, a particular period to submit an attachment to that brief relating to the, to the accused. Uh, how would you respond to that? Thank you, Mr. President. It is true, the 26th of March is the date for the submission of the pretrial brief. The suggestion that you have made suits us absolutely. That is to have a few more days so that we can prepare a single document, Mr. President. I am in your hands as to the number of days, but in any event, I do support that suggestion, and it would be absolutely useful that all the accused should be included in the same pre-trial brief. Prosecutor, the, the senior legal officer.
I, I have revised the schedule as follows. The prosecution pretrial brief to be submitted um, by the 9th of April. <coughs> That's an addition of two weeks. And the defense pretrial brief on the 7th of May. Uh, so we still keep the pretrial conference date on the 16th of May. <coughs> Are there any other any other matters? The hearing stands adjourned. All right, for you, Fulvey.